Yo, what's going on, people? What is going on? Beautiful, at least for Florida, maybe California. Beautiful Saturday afternoon for me. It's a nice 75 degrees right now. And I'm just sitting back about to go inside the gym. Just got here like five minutes ago, went to the store, got some grapes. Because the ones at this other pub was taste like straight just raisins, man. Like, I ate it and it just gave a bad taste in my mouth. A little kind of off topic, but I just thought about this. Uh, it was a black dude on YouTube who was eating fried chicken. And he was like, he, he was kind of like sexualizing his food. Like, he was he was just like playing with the food. Like, it was like a like an actual breast. Like, the chicken breast was an actual breast. And they just gave me a, like a bad... Um, taste in my mouth just the way he 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 like licked the chicken but um i'm about to go inside the gym get a little workout in happy birthday to autistic barbie is one of my subscribers it's crazy how we uh were born like a month a month between each other mine's is uh 22nd but yeah it's good to Good to see another year. Good to see. Good to see. Um, you know, age one year more than what you were last year. Because I promote life, not death. But I spoke to my mother this morning. She called me, and I was listening to a um, as I'm reading because I can read now. I have. Uh, <laughs> I don't get tired when I read. Cause what I do is I I screenshot my books. I get like two pages in each book, and I may do this for the rest of the year just to build my reading back up. I don't get tired no more. But and I didn't I didn't forget anything. But it's just that my speech is is really elementary. My writing's elementary, and just my my knowledge on current events is very elementary. I'm gonna build that back up because I have all my 30s to pursue a career my 20s was just about messing around trying to find myself but i was really believe it or not last week i was really angry and i'm just going to keep it real the girl at my job the one who i um i went off on and i made that mistake on going off on her i really didn't want to go off on her i just was still just a little upset because what happened to me last year with in the ambulance that was just kind of on my mind when I made that video, but it wasn't really her. And I'm not going to be dropping names in this video, but let's just say that a black woman is responsible for you getting fired from a job. And listen, when I say this again, a black female is responsible for you getting fired at a job. Anybody, if 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 a recurring factor happens in your life and a specific group is responsible for that happening, you're going to have a little animosity towards them. So it's like leave, having losing a job, not being able to support yourself, put food in your mouth. You take that very, very personal. Now. It's not the job that I cared about because I wanted to get the hell out of there to begin with. It's just that I don't know how to walk away from things and I'm glad they let me go. But she, um, I know the, le the, the black uh, lesbian, you know, she, we got into, we got into it at the job and they let me go. I'm glad they did. Well, <clears throat> the one at this job, you know, she was asking me questions that she felt she knew. I knew I felt like she knew the answer to. It's like you're trying to ask somebody something, trying to get a reaction out of them. And I'm just like, look, just get the fuck out of my face. I don't know what you're talking about. And why I went off the way I did is because I don't want to be really blunt in this video. Not all, but with a lot of black women. Things persist to the point where, and I'm, I'm really recycling what I said in the last video. They persist where people go to jail, people get get killed, you know, people's brothers and cousins and 
and boyfriends come to the job because there are about there are about two black guys there. Well, really four. I'm not saying I would do this, but if we ever got to an argument where I had to put my hands on her, you know how many simps would come to her defense? And I don't, I don't even think she likes men. But you know how many simps would come to her defense because they don't want to see a black man put their hands on a black female? Now, not a white man, not a police officer, you know, not a racist cop, but another black man does something to a black female. You'll have simps in all directions trying to um, intervene because you can't you can't do that. So my defense is just keeping keeping a distance from her because i can just tell she's she's very messy and me and my mom we had a conversation about this over the phone i was just explaining to her that whenever a black woman comes to the job it's always some messy ass shit you have to you have to be very cautious because i just don't think that goes well with work when you're trying to make money i don't think the two mix together and i'm gonna say it again it's always some drama. It's always some pettiness. It's always some arguments at the nursing home. It was the same shit. I worked around a bunch of black women. It was the same shit. Pettiness, arguments, nitpicking, backbiting. I don't want to. I, I don't. I don't really feel that men should work with women when you're competing in jobs. When you're competing for for um for money, gender should not come together. Just like race shouldn't. And it's funny how um. I can acknowledge that that nobody will call me uh <laughs> nobody will say that um you know you're I mean, I ain't gonna go into that but I don't think that um that gender should should mix when you're trying to make money cuz I understand too with men men are always trying to hit on the females they're always trying to bag the females when you at work and then understand you're there to work and not there to, to talk to women like those two don't don't go together but I'm explaining this to her that I don't want the same thing happening because, you know, it's this is just how I, I make my living. This is just how I make my money right now. I got to this is just what I got to do. And, you know, I was um, I was explaining to her that I um, I just felt some kind of way. Let's just say somebody told me that I'm not dropping no names, but somebody told me that they had to leave a job because this nasty ass woman at her her workplace was giving her like a hard time and it just brought back memories like all the jobs i've had like at least five of them dealt with a female a black female and you know like why is that even a factor at the job why has it always got to be that that one person nobody really wants there but you got to sort of deal with them i just i just don't like that that factor <laughs> but um you know she um so i was just looking at a car go by oh, sheriff anyway um <laughs> yeah anyway she was um she was just telling me because we, we we could talk pretty open. We could tell her. But the thing is, like I said, I don't I don't answer to nobody. I take care of myself. So I don't have to really I'm respectful. Don't get me wrong. But I don't have to really censor the things I say because I take care of me. I, I support myself. Anytime a guy is a little too careful with his words, it's because he has somebody else wiping his own ass for him. But me, I don't I don't answer to nobody. I, I hold my own shit. I, I'm a captain of my own shit. So, you know, I don't. I don't feel any kind of way about the things I say. I mean, I was telling her that if anything, is it more of a problem of what I'm saying? What like should what I'm saying be more of the problem than what is actually being done? People should be more upset of the things I'm talking about, not how what I'm saying, not the person that's saying it, more of what is being done. If you attack more of the things that I'm talking about, maybe you'll see a change. But, um, you know, we we just talked about that because it's Saturday and I, I wasn't really I wasn't really off today. I had a little something to take care of, but um, it wasn't really long. I'll just say it was a little, little something I had to do. And, 
you know, she goes to church on, on Saturday. I used to be a seven day Adventist. I don't identify as a Christian anymore because of the history with the Bible and just how Christianity came to be. But um, my mother, she told me, um, cause I'm, I'm not like, like I said, we, we weren't arguing, but I was just telling her that the black church all like, like in Philly, cause this is not just a Philly thing. I, I don't know, really you know, Daytona, Jacksonville and all the other cities in Florida like that. But in Philadelphia, you're bound to come upon a black church no matter where you go. They're everywhere. And I'm telling, I was explaining to her that if it's so many churches, right, why is it that they are on every corner, but the culture is in the situation, is in the predicament that it's in. The women are the way they are. The children are not being raised correctly. There's no fathers in the home. There's no family structure. Why is that? Why does that persist when you have all these churches? And I was just saying that pretty it's pretty obvious the church has no real effect on the people. It's not reaching the people. Like that movie, um, I think it was Standing to Deliver. He was like, I'm not reaching these people. How do I reach these kids? Or that was an episode of South Park. He was like, how do I reach these kids? They're not reaching the people, obviously, if if they uh, have all these things I'm talking about going on in the community. But, um, you know, every time people, anytime somebody has to reference another community's church, it's all about white churches. They're not serious about the conversation. I'm just saying that we want to talk about the black church. They're doing an awful job teaching of, on, on morality. They're not teaching anything about morality. But I'm, I'm going to say it again. I said this in my video about the black church. Let's just call it what it is. It's a gathering. It's a social club. It's a fashion show. It's just a place to go on Saturday or Sunday, eat hog mogs, read hymns, um, you know, be the biggest whore and slut you could be on during the week. And you, you just do all, you cease all that on Saturday and Sunday. You cease all that. But everything, uh, you, you resume those activities during the week. But everything else that um, the Bible clearly says is, is against God, you do. And you don't, you really don't. You really don't believe in the religion you claim to um, you claim to practice. But I um, I'm just saying that it's, it's no point of these churches being in these communities if they're not really having no effect on the people. I'm saying that if you're putting money like the women, because women mostly support these churches, if you're putting all this money in these churches, you know, you're, you're really like you're, you're not really seeing any results at all. And I, I was just saying to her like that if your pastor talk like me, yeah, he'll lose most of his congregation within um, 24 hours. If you say exactly the stuff I'm saying right now, you would lose most of your support because they don't they don't want to they don't want to offend the very people that that back them that pay their pay for their bends that pay for their home that pay their bills. They don't want to offend these people. So that's why they they just remain silent. Like this girl, um, because when I was going to church, man. It was kind of like, I'm not going to lie. It wasn't like forced upon me. But most kids in the black community that go to church, man, most of them are either forced to go or they just go because um, they don't have no, they can't stay at home by themselves. Because they, their mom don't want them burning down the, the house trying to put a biscuit in the microwave. Something I almost did when I was young. But, you know, I was, um, I was telling myself, like, you know, obviously, like with the girl, Cause it was this girl I used to talk to, um, not like that, but we, we talked, we were like the same age when she went to church and my mom was saying how she had like a little mouth on her. And I was just saying like, why don't, why doesn't the church check that behavior? Why don't they check her for the way she conducts herself? I don't know where, where she is today. I don't know how, what she looks like or where she is now, but if the church really cared about black women and black people, they would check her. They would explain to her, like, this is how you conduct yourself as a woman. No, they're not going to check her because they don't want to. They don't want no problem. They don't want to. They don't really want to address the elephant in the room. But I'm saying it again. If you talk like me in these churches, if you talk like Tommy Sotomayor or Charleston White or anybody that really has a message on the stuff they're saying. And I'm not trying to hold myself to no high regard. You're not going to have support from the very women that, that support you financially, pay for your bench, pay for your home, pay for all those things. You're going to lose that support. And you, you probably might even, um, it may even run your ass out of the community. But um, I'm going to enjoy the rest of my day.
been up all day and i'm gonna go to the gym work on my chest get my muscle back and peace out